So if they're married, then you might say, well, I don't have to do that if they're married because they're one entity. They've become one being, one essence. So they shouldn't have to file a separate tax return in order to allocate the proper amount between the individuals. You can just report it on the Schedule C, you would think, which would full flow through to the first page of the Form 1040. And in essence, that's true for the federal income taxes. But you also have this Social Security and Medicare that comes into play. So Social Security and Medicare is similar to the payroll taxes that usually are withheld if you were a W-2 employee. And they typically are not allocated as though you are one uh, entity combined together, but rather are tied to people's individual Social Security numbers. So even though now you have a situation where you have one entity that possibly runs a business, they run it together and they're kind of together for federal income tax purposes, not a problem, but who gets to be allocated the social security? That's not an issue with regards to how much they're gonna pay into social security because the social security income will be the, the, you know, the same amount of the net income on the schedule C, no matter how you allocate it between partner and spouse if they're filing a joint tax return. But when you think about the distributions from social security at the time of retirement, it will be dependent in part on how much money was put into social security. And that becomes basically a big uh, issue. So that's why we have this issue with regards to the spouses. You would think the easy thing to do would be to report it on a schedule C and combine them together. But we have these issues that come up, these problems that happened uh, not least of which is this allocation of the Social Security, which is the self-employment tax. So if you and your spouse jointly, jointly own and operate an unincorporated business and share in the profits and losses, you are partners in a partnership, whether or not you have a formal partnership agreement. Now, note that if you're a sole proprietor, remember that for taxes, the government just wants a piece of the income. You can basically think if you start a hot dog stand, and you start making money, the IRS is going to say, I want a piece of it. Now, you might say again, you might say, hey, look, I haven't done all the things. I, I haven't basically, do I have to register the truck and make sure that I'm in compliance with regulations? Those are state and local regulations. Typically, even if it was illegal, even if you were selling moldy hot dogs, making people sick, uh, the IRS would still want their piece of it, right? Uh, that's how they think of it for federal income tax purposes. Now, if you made a loss, then the IRS is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe it's just a hobby that you have there and you can't deduct the losses and just give us a piece of the revenue. They might say it that way. But a partnership is similar. What if two people or three people or whatever just start a hot dog stand and they're not married or whatever? Same thing is the case. The IRS is going to view you as a partnership basically and want a piece of the income. Logistically, it's more difficult to calculate the income because you can't just calculate it on a Schedule C if you have different people that are have different Form 1040s. So therefore you have a different flow through entity, a partnership tax return, not taxed at the corporate or partnership level, but rather in order to calculate the net income and allocate according to the partnership agreement to the partners in the form of a K-1, which will then flow through to the individual tax returns, which they'll pay taxes on uh, on the individual uh, level. Now, if you're married, again, you'd kind of think you're one entity. However, you're still two people in some sense as well. So if you're two married people that have the hot dog stand and you own and operate it then yourselves, then in some sense, you're basically a partnership uh, in the, in the uh, system. And the question then would be, well, do I have to file a separate tax return so that I can allocate the K-1s and so on uh, that way? So do not use a Schedule C. So it says instead file form 1065. That's the partnership agreement. Now that's the general rule. We could have exceptions to it as we will see here. So U.S. return of partnership income. So for more information about this, you can see publication 541 partnerships. So then we have the exception community income. Okay, so if you are if you and your spouse wholly own an unincorporated business as a community property under a community property laws of a state, foreign country or US territory, you can treat the business as either a sole proprietor 
or a partnership. Now, this is where the state law comes into play. And so remember that the federal law is making the law with regards to the federal income taxes, but some of the definitions that they're going to have in terms of what does it mean to be property or the who owns the business, what does it mean to be married and so on in terms of property ownership, that could be dependent on the state. And so that's why we have to come up with this community property under community property laws and states. So that means that you're going to need to know what state you're regulating in and whether or and territory or whatever, and whether or not it's a community property state or not in order to deal with this particular uh, problem to see if you would have to file a separate form uh, partnership tax return or possibly file uh, the Schedule C. Uh, so you can treat, treat the business either as a sole proprietorship or a partnership. So uh, states with community property laws include, that's Arizona, California, Idaho, Louisiana, Nevada, New Mexico, Texas, Washington, and Wisconsin. So a change in your reporting position will be treated as a conversion of the entity. You can see publication 555 for more information about community property laws.